Welcome to Fright Fest. Thank you for having um, me. Your film really couldn't be more, unfortunately, on the nose with what it's about, is it? I mean, it's actually more prescient now, I think, than probably when you were even making it and thought so. Mm. I mean, what are your feelings about that particularly? Oh, man, I've got so many feelings about this subject matter. Um, you're right, it is unfortunately a very prescient topic, uh, especially with the news uh, that came out the other day about uh, domestic worker rescue. Unfortunately, this is something that has been happening for years, decades. Um, even my parents uh, back in the 90s were doing stuff like that, you know, trying to rescue domestic workers from abusive employers. Um, and um, it makes me angry, like a, a kind of mad that is really difficult to process. Um, and, um, you know, it's these kinds of topics that uh, ultimately led me to writing something like Raging mm -hmm. Grace. Um, you know, when, when you start feeling this level of anger, frustration, rage, it can become so corrosive. And um, it worries me, like, how, you know, how few systems of care there are for these, these types of vulnerable people, women. Um, and when so many of them look like my mother, mm. and this is you know what my mom used to actually do back in the day. Uh, so know, is joy based on your mother then? It is, yeah. Oh. It, it it does put you in a <clears throat> a really strange mindset, you know, when you start seeing women that look like your mom still being abused, you know, in these kinds of ways. So, yeah. Lots of complicated feelings, <laughs> but film's a great place to explore that. Absolutely. So. You wrote it throughout lockdown, mainly coming from that rage that you said. I mean, yeah. so, I mean, and that I imagine, I mean, that, that time we all had off distilled mm. all those feelings you had together. And because the script is just fantastic, I think. I Thank mean, you. There isn't a foot, it's flawless as well. Oh as my goodness. Goodness. Thanks so much. <laughs> I mean, God. because you go in thinking it's going to be about something mm. and it completely turns into something else. And I think that's where I think the genre aspects come in for the audience and that's what they're going to respond to. Mm. Yeah, I felt, you know, unfortunately, um, so many immigrant stories are horrific mm. and it just felt like genre, particularly horror and thriller, was just something that uh, was very natural to veer towards. It was just such a brilliant, perfect vehicle to sort of you know, heighten a lot of the stuff that, you know, these people go through. Um, yeah, it was such a chaotic year, 2020, you know? It was such an introspective year for so many of us as well. And um, it was a really bizarre year for me in that I had essentially come to a place where I realized I didn't quite know who I was. You know, why was I even making films, you know? I think I was doing everything I was doing for all the wrong reasons. And um, it was a partial discovery in realizing I had lived my life exactly how my parents had told me to, which was get the good grades, don't stick out, don't ruffle any feathers, just be the good immigrant. But you know, during that time, I just realized, oh my God, I am just an injection mold Asian. Mm. You know, a part of the homogenized freeze with no bevels, no contours, I felt undefined. And you know, all of this was like going, happening while there was the rise of Asian hate in the US and the UK. Um, and when we had, we have a government who are, still have toxic rhetoric towards immigrants. And at that time, the same, the, the same immigrants who were propping up the NHS who were mostly Filipino. This is what I can't stand. I mean, the, this whole, that's, the, that's it, isn't it? We cannot do without this. And that they're being treated so badly, mm. it's untrue. I mean, my, my partner works in the health service and it's just mm. heartbreaking. Do you know what I mean? When you come back with these stories and you think, what is wrong with this, this you know, the government, if they don't realise any of this? this do you think the, the issues you raise are going to be... I think a lot of people are going to be really shocked by them, about, mm. and that's actually a shocking aspect in itself, that totally. they don't realise it's all out there. Mm. Well, that's the thing. The horror is often something, uh, in this case, that happens right in front of mm. your eyes, and hiding 
you know, in plain view, in plain sight. And you, you're right, it, it will be a shock. You know, a lot of people felt they needed to comment on the absurdity of this story. The sadness is, is that these are absurdities that we and immigrants often mm. experience. They, they are, you're right, they are absurd. They're mm. ridiculous. And, you know, there's even been moments within the film where I've had to tone down the dialogue, you know, trying to use things verbatim because mm. they just sounded ridiculous. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff in Raging Grace has in fact happened. It's just done in such a way that, you know, th it shines a bright light, throws darker shadows, you know. Um, but I do hope it uh, creates conversations. You know, I, when I was pissed, I wasn't looking to find real answers because I knew this was just so big mm. and so complex. But I wanted this to be a step towards finding joy beyond the trauma, you know, celebration beyond the rage. And um, this is what I want for a lot of people leaving the cinema is to rage gracefully, safely, you know, mm. so that we get to a place of happiness. Mm. So yeah. let's talk about the, the, I mean, like Max and Jaden. I mean, where did you find them? Was it just the usual casting process? No, not, not. Exactly. Um, Jaden, who's an extraordinarily intelli emotionally intelligent person, I was supposed to shoot a short film with her, uh, but obviously lockdown happened, that fell through. I wrote Raging Grace, immediately thought of her, but I wanted to you know, expand on the casting, just see what was out there. Mm. We ended up seeing about 15, 12, about 15 girls, and she still managed to rise to the top. Um, she just understood the nuances of this character. Um, and she, her face just gives you so much for free, you know? And that was something I was always looking for, just in case the complexities of the story, uh, you know, felt like it might be beyond, you know, her understanding. But no, she got it immediately. Max, um, again, that was another kind of, um, fortuitous casting process just because we had looked here uh, but it was our Filipino co-producer who uh, just spotlighted Max and when I heard her read the monologue she delivered it in a way I hadn't heard it on the script and I thought that was special it was also the way she managed to physically embody some of the comedic elements of the film without undercutting any of the drama and um, that was so important because trying to balance the tone of those uh, you know when things can swing dramatically mm. to horror but also seem funny too I you know she was amazing at being able to balance and hold those two things at once. Mm. You said it's a um, one part of a trilogy Correct. Is this correct? <coughs> yes. And you've already written the next one, Domestic, I I'm believe? I'm quite literally about 10 pages away from finishing Domestic. And um, it's a, a thematic trilogy, hmm. um, which es essentially shares, th they all share a common theme, which is sort of railing against colonialism, um, and but ex exploring it through multi-genre, blended genre, Domestic is uh, an unlikely uh, heist movie about a young Filipino couple who, um, which is based in 90s London. While running a cafe on the weekends, they set up covert rescue missions to rescue um, domestic workers from their abusive employers. Um, and it was based on a true story of my parents back in the 90s who used to do this, and I had no idea they did this at all until it came to the research phase of Raging Grace. Um, I used to have these strange aunties who would come and live with us, you know, periodically. I had no idea who they were, and it started falling into place as soon as my mom told me who they were. Um, and again, you know, this is one of those subject matters that 
so few people know about, but it's happening right here in the centre of London, um, you know, maybe a mile from you, maybe next door to you. Um, and it gives way to, to so much horror, thriller. You know, I, I do want to make things entertaining, um, but beneath the surface of that is a truth that is, you know, rarely discussed, mm. if ever. We've got another film on which is playing tomorrow called Home Sweet Home. It's about South African colonialism wow. and it's dealt more in a supernatural context. Mm. But it's actually very, um, not, I'm not going to say similar, mm. but you deal with the same sort of issues as that. Yeah. And I thought this is definitely something that's in the zeitgeist. Every year we sort of recognise a sort of theme yeah. emerging and I think this seems to be the one, especially as outside forces are sort of shaping the way people are thinking about this. Mm. So I think you've hit the zeitgeist really with this one and I think wow. that that's why I'm seeing great reviews to this movie. I mean people who I wa weren't expecting to like it, yeah. like it. Wow, <laughs> that's so good. Do you know? So I haven't read any reviews. Ah. Um, I'm too... What, scared? I'm too fragile. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they're good, I'm like, oh God, they said this one bad thing and um, that will be the end of me. No, I'm so happy to hear that. It, um, you know, when you, uh, you have parents who want you to fit in so bad mm. that it becomes about white approval very, very quickly, mm. even if you didn't know that. To make something that rails against the society that we live in, um, about colonialism, you know, essentially spotlighting or hanging a lantern on a really dark part of, mm. you know, British history. It's scary as hell um, because not only do I feel like I'm going against my parents, but it's all of this kind of like <sighs> mini traumas that I don't quite know how to articulate. There's a fear here that I'm going to upset the wrong people. Um, what do your parents think of it? What have they said to you about it? My dad hasn't seen it. Uh. Uh, my mum enjoyed it because she's finally understood what it is that I do. Mm. Okay. Maybe it doesn't... No, I need to give her more credit than that. I, she, she enjoyed it. Um, I think she was cautious about watching it because it was based on some of her mm. experiences. Mm, she came away feeling proud. But she doesn't so. resent you for using her in that sort of... No, no, way. she doesn't. Because you think... wonder about that, don't you? That these memories are a bit too 100%. raw to be able to put on screen like that. Well, my mother was, is very resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, when she t spoke to me about these things, she often spoke with it with some lightheartedness. I think that's a, a thing with a lot of, um, especially people from the Philippines who deal with trauma, it just seems inherent that they add comedy in there or, uh, you know, a humour to it. For her, it was often, you know, speaking to me about situations where she found it difficult to articulate these micro and macro aggressions. Like, what was it that made her feel deeply uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. And it was unpicking those things that, you know, really helped put some of that stuff on on page. And I think she was happy to sort of f see a way which was now verbalised, you know, and seen. And it didn't make her feel like she was making it up or anything. Mm. Well, it's going to be a good screening tonight, I think, mainly because the, you know, we've got the Philippine Club Choir coming in national dress, which is surprising. <laughs> Originally, we were going to have them singing, but it's just the logistics of I that were completely impossible to, to organise. But listen, um, congratulations again. Thank you. The so film's much. great. And I just hope it goes the distance for you because it really is quite something special, I think. Oh, man, that means a lot. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you.